can all rise now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And I bless the body of Dorothy Vazalone with the holy water of which St. Paul writes, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him so that Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of her baptism, Dorothy put on Christ. And in the day of Christ's coming, may she be clothed with glory. servant Dorothy be welcomed into eternal joy for as you were pleased to create her in your own image and adopt her as your own so command that she may have a share in your inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Kind of be seated now, and whoever has the first reading can come forward. The first reading is from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search, and a time to give up a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading, please. A second reading, letter to Paul to the Romans. None of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. 
For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Kindly be seated. In the name of all the parishioners here at Our Lady of Fatima, and if I could speak on behalf of so many people that knew your mom in the valley, We'd like to express our condolences, our sympathies, and our prayerful support to you, especially to Debbie and Jerry, to Beck, to Mary Jo and Michael, to Beth and Steve, to Nanette and Michael, to the 15 grandchildren, the 19 great-grandchildren, and the five great-great-grandchildren and of course to her surviving sister, Mary. You know, when they write a history of Farrell 50 years from now or 100 years from now, your mom and your grandma, her name is going to be indelibly marked in that history book. Can't imagine how many people she served, how many people she welcomed, even the, even the rowdy ones, you know? Did any of you work in the restaurant at all? Gonna show hands here, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, all right. Well, you know what it's all about, right? You understand these things and To be in the quote-unquote, if we use the newest words, the service industry, you know, you realize just how taxing and uh, how much effort you have to put into it. And we realize that, you know, she, she did the job. She did her level best to keep it going. And um, I know that she, as you say in the, uh, in the um, obituary, that she was the beloved matriarch 
How wonderful. What an important job she had in terms of, as it says, loving you, taking care of your needs, looking out for you, her family. I have a, a little saying by a guy named William Martin, and I'm just going to kind of adjust it to your particular situation and to mine also. Talks about asking your children to live and strive for extraordinary lives, huh? But this author says, help them instead to find wonder and marvel in the ordinary life. Show them the joy of tasting tomatoes, apples, pears, Margie dogs, all those things, huh? Show them how to cry when pets and people die. Show them the infinite pleasure in the touch of a hand and make the ordinary come alive for them. The extraordinary will take care of itself. I think that your mom was that kind of lady, that she helped you to realize how important family is to her and is to each and every one of you. Now, granted, when we have big families like this, uh, you know, there's always a little bit, somebody's nose goes like this and gets out of joint and people get a little excited, but then, when it all comes down to it, you're still blood to one another, huh? You're still part of this clan of the Basilones. And, and, and I think that um, you can't help but um, reflect on today. You know, I know you had time at the funeral home to um, um, receive people's understanding there are good words, even the good words that you exchange between each other. But today here we're in the church and we're lifting up her whole life before Almighty God. Not an easy life, huh? Those of you who work there, you know how difficult it was, how taxing. But we lift it all up before the Lord. And we realize that he accepts her gift of her life back to himself. Now, one of the major, and I'm sure it was your uh, major labor, as the gospel said today, was the death of Billy. Terrible and it highly affected your mom and your grandma. I understand that she couldn't even drive down Romer Boulevard anymore. She couldn't even enter a church building because it was so stressful to her. It would just utterly crush her. It's understandable. A mother's love for her children. But today, we're here to appreciate the fact that she kept her faith, that in her room, she watched the Mass faithfully on TV, that she had her time of prayer, that sometimes you guys came over and said the rosary with her. You can't get any better than that, huh? To ease her sadness, to strengthen her heart, and to give you the opportunity to do what she did, meaning to take care of you, the family. And then you had the opportunity to take care of her. 
It's never an easy thing to say goodbye to a parent, to your mom. One of the, she's one of the underpinnings, you know, that holds up our life. And I know that all of you have moved on, you know, you're all grown up, you've all gone on to other things and you all live your own lives. But still, still, there is an ache in our hearts when somebody that we love and respect dies. Dorothy believed in God, not as a magic pill, not as someone that she just turned to when times were tough, but she was a woman of faith. And that's all that she's asking you to do, to be people of faith. And uh, I think that um, a lot of times we apply faith to the ladies who wear babushkas, huh? Say, uh, that's their job, that's their job. But it's very masculine, it's very appropriate in this day and age, especially, to be people of prayer. Now, we don't have to broadcast it. We don't have to go out there and, and give, it, give, it, give it out uh, in terms of the public, but in all honesty, we all have to be prayerful people. And now you even have a better reason to pray. So the next time you're in church, whatever denomination you belong to. The next time you're in church, offer a prayer for Dorothy. The next time that you lay your head on your pillow before you close your eyes, make sure you say a prayer for her. Because prayer keeps the connection alive between this part of the world and the world to come. And so she's never forgotten. I know that some of her uh, skills and abilities and her personality are part of you all, but it goes way beyond that. I could take this piece of paper that I have Dorothy's obituary on, and I could slide it in between where she lives now in eternity and where you and I live in space and time. That's how close the dimensions are to one another. So as much as we are saddened by her passing, we know that the burden and the heart break that she carried in her life, that now it will truly be healed in the ultimate embrace of Christ. And that she will be united with your dad, your grandpa, huh? She'll be united with Billy, with her sisters, her family members, and that you and I believe in the communion of the saints. Now, I don't understand, you know, how it's going to happen or, or is it going to be just like here on earth? Is there going to be a Basilones or a hilltop up there in the hills of heaven? I don't know that. But it will definitely be something personal, just like Dorothy was personal to people. It'll definitely be a unification of all those individuals that she loved in life. So we bring her body, her mortal remains to the church now. We offer this sacrifice of the mass, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross for her. He understands all that she went through in life. 
her toil, her dedication, all of those things the Lord understands. So today we offer our, not our goodbyes, but uh, I think she was Slavic of some kind, right? What was, what was her uh, ethnic background? Ukrainian? That's what I thought. Well, you know, in, in uh, the Slavic people, they don't have a word for goodbye. There's no word for goodbye. We say dovijenya, until I see you again. That's literal translation of that. Until I see you again. So that's what we say to Dorothy. Peace, Dorothy. We love you. Your family goes on without you. Continue to bless them with your prayers and your presence. Let's stand now and we'll offer our petitions. In baptism, Dorothy received the light of Christ, scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our sister Dorothy was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Dorothy Bazalone seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Dorothy. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord God, giver of peace, healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Grant Dorothy a place in your kingdom. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated now.
Please stand. Pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Mercifully receive, O Lord, the offering we trustingly present for the soul of your servant, Dorothy, that uh, through this sacrifice, which you ordained as the one true remedy for all, you may grant her everlasting salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. holiness make holy these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion took bread giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, supper was ended, took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit and remember lord your church spread throughout the world bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, the clergy, and all those who minister to us. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And remember your servant Dorothy, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Granted, she 
who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. And have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Good afternoon. My name is Stephanie, and I want to thank you so much for attending this ceremony honoring the life of my Graham Dorothy Baslon. I will say to start that this could have been a lot longer, but mom told me only one minute, so. How many of you ever had the chance to watch Graham make a salad? Show of hands. Yeah. I know you're probably thinking, Steph, why are we even talking about salads right now? But over the years, I was fortunate to spend a lot of time with Graham and a lot of time in her kitchen. When making a salad, she would prepare the lettuce, chop the tomatoes, add some olives, and then, like many of her recipes, she would measure the oil and vinegar by eyeballing it. She'd add a perfect capful of oil and then pour vinegar into the cap until it overflowed. And I think that's a great representation of Graham's love for her family and friends, overflowing. I also think it's safe to say that Graham's love language was food. From spaghetti and meatballs to biscotti and pizzas, Graham was always prepared to feed anyone who came into her home, whether you were hungry or not. And you knew when it was time to eat, as it was the only time there would be silence in the house. And if the phone rang while food was on the table, Graham would tell whoever called, don't bother a mad dog while he's eating, and you'd have to call back later. The telltale sign that it was time to get comfy and put your feet up in a recliner was when Graham would call out, kitchen's closed. Graham was a storyteller. She loved to share what was going on with her family and friends, and she wanted to be there for all of our milestones, whether it was graduations, weddings, birthdays, or holidays. Over the years, I spent many hours with her in hospital waiting rooms awaiting the births of her great and great-great-grandchildren. Graham always wanted to be the first one to hold the new babies in the family, and of course would have to open their swaddles and take off their socks to check for all ten toes. But honestly, if we're honest with ourselves, that was just an excuse for her to see if the socks had left imprints on, her, on their ankles, right? <laughs> As our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren grew up, Graham could be known to tease us by shaking the Sunday paper to make us jump, holding us upside down, saying piggy for sale, or telling us no, 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 while wagging her finger, and always with a devilish smile on her face. As we grew into adolescence and early adulthood, time with Graham looked like playing Rummy 500, learning family recipes, and talking about what was going on in our lives. When I moved to Charleston in 2013, I was so worried about not being able to share my experiences with Graham. And after months of her saying, you can't teach a new dog old, or an old dog new tricks, I finally convinced her to download Snapchat so I could send her pictures and videos. I think nine years later, everyone can agree that Graham can take better selfies than, than most and would brighten everyone's day with her daily Snapchat selfie. She brought so much joy and love into every life that she touched and she'll be missed dearly by all who knew her. Thank you so much for coming and for adding so much love and meaning to Graham's life. Thank you. And thanks for your good words. Let's stand and we'll pray. Renewed by the nourishment of this sacred gift, we pray, O oh Lord, that our sister Dorothy, freed from the bonds of death, may rejoice to have a share in the resurrection of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And now we'll have the final commendation. Before we go our separate ways, we take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness, strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Dorothy in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints. Merciful Lord, turn toward us, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now in peace, we take our sister to her place of rest. <laughs> 